وماضي الأفعال بالتا مز وسم بالنون فعل الأمر إن أمر فهم وماضي الأفعال بالتا مز وسم بالنون فعل الأمر إن أمر فهم وماضي الأفعال بالتا مز وسم بالنون فعل الأمر إن أمر فهم وماضي الأفعال بالتا مز وسم بالنون فعل الأمر إن أمر فهم و إز أنت This is in continuation from the verse in this poem before it so this wa is here to continue that discussion madi al af'al the the past madi is past madi al af'al the past of the verbs so the past of the verbs meaning the past verb bitta b it means by or with and depending on the context so bitta with the ta this here is the definite article al but this connecting hamza does not is not uh, pronounced when it's within a word fits with, uh, within the sentence so bitta ta is this ta here this is the ta or it could be like this but the one we are talking about in this verse is this one here so this ta is what we are talking about the open ta so by this ta with this ta mez mez is the imp uh, the imperative or command form of the verb maz the past tense of it is maz and in here it means to distinguish to set aside or in the context of the grammar here is to give it as its own mark so by this ta give a mark mez mark or distinguish the past tense of the verbs so madi al af'al distinguish or mark by the ta the past of the verbs distinguish or set aside with the ta and this ta what he means by is this ta here and it's moving ta it's called the moving ta it can have an o on it or an a or an e we have examples here we will discuss and the other ta is the silent ta this ta here it has a small circle on it if you have diacritics in the text to indicate it has no movement so this is very important to recognize this you have the moving ta meaning you can hear it pronounced as two ta or t and the silent ta this it it so here we have an example of this moving ta with the past tense verb so katab or kataba is the past tense for write so he wrote kataba notice a ba i say kataba now when you connect the moving ta to it here in arabic they don't like to have uh, four letters with no silent letter uh, among them like four uh, moving letters following each other that's one of the rules and here with the moving ta the past tense will uh, if it's all consonant of the letters of the past tense are all consonant will be, will silence the last letter of it so katab katab then you add the moving ta this ta means the pronoun for different people so with an u katabtu this i wrote katabtum notice two it has an u on it two katab notice the silence of the ba the last consonant of this past tense verb right he wrote katab so two here is the ver the pronoun for the subject the one who's doing the writing but this M is added there. This M is for the... Now this ta uh, with this M indicates the second person. This here by itself, two, is for first person, I. Here, Tom is the second person, plural masculine. So you, if you're talking to men, you say you wrote 
كتبتم with this am here in to indicate the plural of a masculine and this ta is the pronoun to كتبتن same thing notice the to here كتبتن so this to is the pronoun and this an here is uh, an indication of the feminine the second person feminine plural so just make sure you recognize the difference between these ends and uh, and the way you do that is by understanding what ca came before it like in here you know this is the the verb the katab he wrote then you recognize this moving ta added to it and the effect it has on this letter here and you see the an or the am that's how you recognize it's for the second person either masculine with the am feminine with the an now katabta you notice just the ta there with an ah katabta that's the second person singular masculine katabta katabti is for the second person in the past this pa here is for the past all these are in the past just like it says here in the verse katabti is for the second person singular feminine so katabta you masculine singular katabti you you wrote feminine singular so katabta katabti katabtu i wrote and here we just discussed so this is for the this ta that the moving ta with the past tense verb and its effects katabat notice now the verb stays the same here kataba as if it's by itself he wrote what ad was added to it is this silent ta katabat so if i want to say she wrote i just add this ta this is not a pronoun the grammarians do not call it a pronoun they just call it the feminizing ta of the past tense verb so this moving ta and this silent ta here that causes the verb to indicate the singular third person feminine she wrote katabat notice the effect on the last letter here of this word the past tense verb katab it's stayed the same because this is a silent ta now this here is in the past all these are in the past and if you see the past tense verb you recognize the past tense verb and you see this ta you will only see it, these pronouns here you will only see them with the past tense verb so the minute you see it you recognize you are looking at a past tense verb and this feminizing ta you will only see it with the past tense verb so that's what this verse says here وَمَاضِيَ الْأَفْعَالِ بِالْتَامِزِ so distinguish the past tense verbs with this ta either the moving ta or the silent ta here the feminizing silent ta wasm here wasm from the verb wasama he marked something by distinguish it by using a stamp or some form of making that mark the command form of it is sim here the swa here is for and was wasm sim sim is the command form of it we will see how these change in just a second i have a description of it so sim means mark with something with what with the noon bin nuni by again this ba here in this context by the noon so with this n here it could be like this heavy or light so this n here bin nuni with this n this is what noon is the noon he is talking about to distinguish the command fi'l al amr so wasm bin nuni fi'l al amr the verb to indicate the command can uh, can take this n here if it doesn't take it it's not called a command form and there is conditions for it to take this n here so here it says wasm bin nuni mark this verb the command form with this n this will be its distinguishing mark in amrun him if a command is understood use this n at the end of the verb that you understand as a command and that will be a mark for it because it accepted that n now the way this is done with verbs of course this is just a, a short discussion of this so the way you make the 
command that he's talking about. There are different types of commands. This one is the command he's talking about here. You take the present tense verb like this here. يعملو, he does or he works. It can have an U or A or a silent move it because of its, it's a present tense verb. It, can, it end can change. And these are the possible changes for it if it's a consonant, meaning the last letter is a consonant which accepts movements. This is how you would see it with these move, movements. U, A and no movement. This is present here. I can add this emphasizing N. Now this N also is called the emphasizing N here. So this noon we are talking about, it's called an emphasizing N. And the present tense verb will also take it. So you can see it with the present tense verb. And the effect it has on the present tense verb, it prevents it from taking any other movement. So if this N is attached to a present tense verb, you will never see these movement. You will only see this A there. So with the end, the end is fixed. So things that usually cause the present tense end to change will not will not work anymore. So this is one of the one of the effects of this emphasizing an or emphasis an on the present tense verb. So يعملنا. That's to emphasize the uh, the act of doing here. It's used how that's how it's used in Arabic. So this is the present tense verb without the emphasis on and with it. To get the commanding form, all you have to do is drop this present tense letter. We know the four present tense letters. You can put them in one word in the aytu. An, a, ya, ta, na aytu. It's four letters. This ya is here. You just drop it in this present tense verb. You drop it and you add this connecting hamza, we call it. So, Notice I used marks here you will not see together in the writing. I just put it there to help you remember. Here is the sign or the mark for a connecting Hamza. Meaning within a sentence you don't pronounce it. But if you start a, a sentence with it, you pro pronounce this A there. And it could be on top of it or it could be an A or E or U. With the command form, you can see it as an E or an U or an A as Akhraj here. Of course, these things you will learn uh, gradually. You don't take this whole thing together. But here I'm discussing this verse. So you can come back to it later when you cover these things. Or just get a, uh, some idea about it now. So if I drop this present tense letter there and put this E, uh, it becomes a command. So... I drop this here becomes amal. The other effect is it end becomes silent. It no longer takes these movements. So you will set amal, amal, no movement. That's how you distinguish it as a command, amal. I can add the emphasizing and just like I added it in the present tense, I can just keep it. So I can say amalanna, amalanna as an emphasis. That's the end, the job of the end here. So notice with the emphasis on, the last letter had to take this movement. A, i'mala. Now depending on the verb you are using, it can be an U or an A, like Oktub or Akhrij. So this is the form that you will see the emphasis on with. Uh, there are other forms if the verb has vowel and such. So just be aware of that. Another example is Oktub. Notice the silent movement or no movement at the end of Oktub. Oktubanna. Now the emphasis N is added and notice the movement before it. It, it took the A. So it started, it moved. So that happens because of the emphasis N. Notice B instead of Ib, no movement. So the emphasis an causes the end of the present tense verb and the command form, if it's a consonant, to take this a sound. So the present tense end, if it's a consonant and there is nothing attached to it, changes. So now we have something attached to it. That's why it has a fixed movement. Now here, this here is yaktubn. This here is the pronoun, this an here. 
I just wanted to point out that there are different ends. This N here is the pronoun for the group of women. So if the ones who are writing are a group of uh, females, girls or women, the pronoun that refers to them is an N here. And you can distinguish it from the emphasis N by this silent movement at the end of the present tense. So the feminine pronoun N causes the end of the present tense to be silent. So yaktub N. So the difference between the pronoun N and the emphasis N is the different ending of the present tense verb and the stress. So uktubna and uktubanna. So when I change the present tense into a command form with the pronoun, I say uktubna. Notice no movement before the pronoun N. Again, pay attention to the lack of movement before the pronoun N and the absence of the stress. Also, just be aware there are different ends in the Arabic uh, language and there are ways to distinguish between them. It just takes practice. Now, an examples of the emphasis and discussed in this verse are i'malanna and uktubanna. So these are examples of a present tense verb turned into a command and this is the form of a command form that takes this and there are other commands or forms of commands that they will not accept this an. So this is a mark for the command form. In this case, the three letter root verb. So these are the different types of ends that you will see with the present tense verb or the command. So this is the meaning of this verse. وَمَاضِيَ الْأَفْعَالِ بِتَّا The moving ta or the silent ta. Miz, distinguish. So that's for the past tense. We discussed this. The moving ta and the silent ta. For feminizing the verb, the silent ta. Wasm bin nuni and mark by the noon, this an here, the emphasis an. Fi'l al amr, the command form, in amrun fuhim, if you understand a command. Or not you, in amrun fuhim, if a command is understood. It does not say who's doing the understanding, just if a command is understood. That's the uh, literal meaning of these words here. Now I will leave you with a text from Wiktionary, which explains how Miz, the command, came from Maz, the past tense, and Sim, which is the command that came from Wasim. وماضي الأفعال بالتامز وسم بالنون فعل الأمر إن أمر فهم وماضي الأفعال بالتامز وسم بالنون فعل الأمر إن أمر فهم 
وماضي الأفعال بالتامز وسم بالنون فعل الأمر إن أمر فهم